Good. We all feel. No, shut up. I have something to say. Leafs lose 9 3. 9 3. 9 2. Actual 3 to the Buffalo Sabres. Like this year's Buffalo Sabres. The same Buffalo Sabres that had a 9 spot hung on them by the Columbus. The Columbus Blue Jackets? Did that to them. Did that to the Buffalo Sabres. Speaking of the Columbus Blue Jackets, the Leafs lost to the Blue Jackets after being down 5 0. They roar back to force overtime and they lose in overtime. And what did I call that LFR video? For everyone who just thinks I'm, I'm being so hard on the team, what did I call the video after the Leafs lost that game against Columbus? Mulligan. I called it Mulligan because they deserve a Mulligan on that one. They deserve another opportunity on that one because they were playing great. Leading into that game, they were play oh, I'm already out of breath. They were playing great for like a solid month. They had a ridiculous record. It was like 10, 1, and 3 or something like that over a 14 game span. They were playing ridiculous. They were down 5 0. They had a stinker, but we all knew that the team was sick, like literally had the flu throwing up and booting themselves. Sick. They come back and it was fun and we forgave them. And then what happened? The next game, they go out and this game with Martin Jones against the New York Rangers. Oh, the puck. Oh, it's just bouncing off of everything. And three of them went in off other defensemen. And you know what? Oh, you're just going to lose games like that. Sheldon Keefe even said that. Oh, you're just going to lose games like that. Mulligan means one. Mulligan means you get one. And this entire fan base was more than happy to give this team Two. They said, you know what? The Columbus game was fun. Ha ha he he. And the game against the Rangers. And you know what? They're sick and they're pooping themselves. And I actually forgot about the game where Austin Matthews wasn't in the lineup and they hung seven goals on the Pittsburgh Penguins. They rewarded us. They lost that game against the Columbus Blue Jackets and they showed the next game. See, that was a fluke. Then the game happened against the Rangers and we go, you know, you know, you know, they deserve it. Absolutely not. Lump a coal in your stocking. Ilya Samsonov, we will get to Ilya Samsonov, was not good. He was awful. He was a non-option. But this team quit on Ilya Samsonov. They quit on Martin Jones. They quit on each and every one of their teammates and didn't show an ounce of life until there was a minute left in the game. And they quit on every single Leaf fan who dedicated their Thursday night to watching it on television or listening on the radio or streaming it on their platform of choice, but they quit on the fans who packed that building every single time the Leafs are in Buffalo. And I know Buffalo Sabres fans hate it and they were having a good old time. All 550 of the actual Buffalo Sabres fans who were in attendance were having a great time. There's so many Leaf fans in the building. Who do you think sold them the ticket, stupid? You can't talk out of both sides of your mouth. All oh, Leaf fans ransack the place. Buffalo Sabres fans sell them the tickets. They do everything in their power to prevent Leaf fans from getting their tickets. And Leaf fans get their tickets anyway. They are the lifeblood of this entire league. Despite the fact that they haven't won a Stanley Cup. They haven't even been to a final since two years before man landed on the moon. And they quit on that fan base. They quit on them in this game. I don't give a good gosh darn what you did in November. I don't even get, I don't care what you've done in the weeks leading up to this. This is a bad trend and it's got nothing to do with the goalie. And you know what? Maybe it does have something to do with the goalie because if your goalie is not making saves and make no mistake, Ilya Samsonov cannot make saves right now and for the vast majority of this season. But Oh, oh, he let, oh, dude, what? Chris Osgood had something like an 888 save percentage. And this was in 2009 when save percentages were bonkers McNuts through the, I don't know where I came up with that name. They were bonkers McNuts through the roof. He had like an 888. His team, the Detroit Red Wings, went to the Stanley Cup final. I know it's the Detroit Red Wings and they ended up losing in the Stanley Cup final. I'd kill for losing in the Stanley Cup final. You gotta win three rounds to do that. The Leafs haven't done that cumulatively in like a quarter century. Combined! 
you can win games with a bad goalie. There are teams in the league doing it right now. The Carolina Hurricanes are like in crisis and looking for a goalie. They're, they have some of the worst goaltending, probably bottom five goaltending in the entire league, and they've tried three different guys, and still they're competing. Their coach is upset, the team is upset, but the players, good gosh darn it, every time they're asked about it, they're like, no, the answer is in this room. It is our responsibility to get through this. The Leafs, huh? Huh? Thousands of our adoring fans traveled over a border to come watch us tonight, paid God knows how much money on beer and tickets and gas and everything. Their time. Their time. You can earn back money. You can't get back your time. And they quit on them and they felt bad about themselves and the horrible body language with Ilya Samsonov. It's unacceptable. Max Domi, he had a goal in this one. Hooray! And we're all yelling and laughing at Jonas Siegel. I got bad news. While it's fun that Max Domi is on a really good pace for the amount of points he has, he can't be the 3C. Like, I said this a month ago. He can't, not when the playoffs come. He's fine as a regular season stopgap. I don't think they have to do something immediately. But he scored in this one, and still, after like seven minutes of ice time, he was a minus three. You can't have it. Connor Timmons is uh, probably going to go on waivers and probably going to go unclaimed. There's another guy who puts up a ton of points, a ton of points, and who cares because that is how bad he is in his own end. He's awful. The Leafs have better options on the Marlies, or at very least have started the season on the Marlies, than that guy outside of that one play from Matthews. The top line was basically invisible. The second line was putting around and horrible body language from the captain of all people and complaining all night. It was just an awful, awful, awful game all around. Now, Ilya Samsonov. Buddy, buddy, buddy. What do we even do with any of that? So what they were talking about in the broadcast, and a lot of you may not know this guy yet, Dennis Hildeby, okay? Dennis Hildeby was drafted by the Leafs, I want to say, as a 20-year-old in 2021. I'm pretty sure I was at the draft where he was picked, and I believe that was in Montreal. He's come over to North America. He's played, I think, 14 games in North America. Lights out. He has a winning record. Unbelievable save percentage. He's honestly one of the hottest and one of the best goalies in the American Hockey League this season. So you call him up immediately, right? Well, no, this is exactly what you got Martin Jones for. You got Martin Jones so that if a Leaf goalie gets injured, you're not scrambling, right? So you have Joseph... No, here's what you had at the beginning of the season. You had Ilya Samsonov, who you just gave $3.5 million to. Then you have Joseph Wool, who's playing for like league minimum or maybe less than league minimum somehow. And Sammy is going to get the majority of the starts, but they're probably going to split it somewhat with the tie going to Sammy. And that was the case for a little while. And then Sammy was butt, and Joseph Wool was great. So they gave Wool a little bit more of the net. And then they gave him all of the net, because Sammy, despite a couple pretty good games, became basically unusable. So Joseph Wool is the starter for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and Sammy has lost that job. Now, Martin Jones, who the Leafs had to give a $100,000 incentive to so that teams wouldn't take him off of waivers. Imagine having to spend $100,000 on cap shenanigans to keep your third goalie who had an 887 save percentage in the National Hockey League last season from getting claimed off of waivers. And then imagine that goalie taking like three games to steal your $3.5 million goalie's job. That is exactly what has happened. Sammy is not only not the Leafs starter, he's not the Leafs backup. He might go on waivers and he might go unclaimed. That's how bad this is. So they came into the season three goalies deep. You get guy who won you a playoff series last year, kid who you know can do pretty well. Your third goalie is an experienced NHL goalie who doesn't have great numbers, but he did win 27 games last season on a playoff team. One, two, three. You should not, without injury, be dealing with a situation before Christmas where you're like, well, what if we start the AHL rookie who's never played North American hockey before in the National Hockey League? Like, I know Joseph Wool is injured. I'm not saying there's no injuries. Sammy's fine. Jones is fine. You have two healthy, supposedly, 
NHL goalies, we can't even be having the conversation of starting this guy. What it should be is Sammy finds a way through it. Jones is there if he can't find his way through it. And you let the kid develop in the American Hockey League because that is what the American Hockey League is for. Samsonov has the worst case of the yips I've ever seen. And people are talking about Jack Campbell and oh, he reminds me of Jack Campbell. Jack Campbell was a great Leaf. Anyone remember that? No, things are not going great right now. But he was a great Leaf. He consistently put up great numbers from the moment he arrived here. And yes, he had things that would bother you. And yes, he would allow a stinker, a deflating goal. And sometimes he would have an off-putting game. And sometimes even in the games where he played well, you'd be like, Jack, why are you so hard on yourself in the post-game interviews? But he found a way and battled through it. He was in literal tears when they lost to the Montreal Canadiens. We all saw the footage. He came back the next year and had a great next year with the Toronto Maple Leafs. They went all the way to Game 7 against Tampa. You all know how it ended. But still, he had a really good season. If he can battle through the ups and the downs of being the Toronto Maple Leafs goalie, this is a goalie who we know battles the yips. Ilya Samsonov does. This is a goalie who we know battles the yips. And so is Jack Campbell. He's that guy. If Jack Campbell can do it, you have to play the wheels off of Samsonov. And I know no one wants to hear that right now, but the Leafs are not exactly in a point of desperation for points in the standings. I know every game is important, but I tell you what, the next game is against Columbus. And on the broadcast, they're talking about, well, obviously Martin Jones is going to get that start. What? No! No! And believe me, hey, who is most likely to give you a win in the next game? Martin Jones is. Martin Jones. I cannot believe before Christmas I am saying that, but Martin Jones is the far more likely goalie to give you a win in that game. But you have $3.5 million invested against the salary cap in Ilya Samsonov this season. He has to, has to, has to play games, and he has to, has to, has to find his way out of it. Because if you're sitting him, if you want to truly give him time off to rest, to recover, you're putting him in the press box, you might even tell him to not even attend the games. Who's backing up Jones then? Unless you have some miraculous move that I am not aware of, what are you doing? And I don't know if you noticed this, Jones wasn't that great in this one either, but he had a team that had already quit on him. It wasn't just a team that sulked after the first bad goal. And it was a bad goal. It's the National Hockey League. I can understand not feeling confident in yourself. I can understand it. I can understand going through it and struggling. Who watching this video right now doesn't understand the feeling of what Ilya Samsonov is going through? Dude, it sucks. It sucks when you're doing a bad job at your job and you know you're doing a bad job at your job and it's even worse when you do it in front of thousands of people live and then in front of millions of people on TV. But it's professional sports. The schedule stops for no one. Your best player got hurt, whoops, better keep playing the games. Your goalie can't stop a beach ball, whoops, well, got another game tomorrow and this happened, this happened, this happened. They don't stop the schedule. This team has to find a way to play for Sammy. Sammy has to find a way to play for the team. The team has to find a way to play for each other. And Sammy has to find a way to play for himself. Or they're boned until Joseph Wool gets back. And that is no way to be. You can't jeopardize the future of this team which lies in Dennis Hildeby and how great he looks. You cannot jeopardize that because the goal you pay $3.5 million to is having a bad month. It can't work that way. It mustn't work that way. That is a panic move. Sammy has to figure it out or this team has to figure it out for Sammy. Those are options one and two. <sighs> wow, how long was that? I am out of... Nine three! Producer Drew, it feels ridiculous to do this, but he worked on it and it's great. 
We, we have a segment in these videos once a week called Marley Minute. Nick Barden, who covers the Toronto Marlies, who we've mentioned several times in this video, uh, made a little video for us talking about uh, Ryan Twerberg, who's a uh, interesting young forward prospect for the Toronto Maple Leafs playing on the Toronto Marlies, and an unfortunate uh, incident with uh, another forward prospect, Ty Voigt, who made his AHL debut and immediately got hurt. Please, Drew. Play the, play the video. Play, I've run out of air. Ryan Torberg is a player who had a lot of mystery behind him when the Maple Leafs drafted him in the seventh round of the 2020 NHL draft. But in his first AHL season with the Toronto Marlies, it appears as though the 21-year-old is finding his way. Torberg missed a good chunk of games in November after suffering a lower body injury just a few games into the season. But ever since he's been back, with the Marlies, he's found a way to contribute. The 21-year-old has points in six of his nine AHL games this year, putting him up to eight points through that span. Marlies head coach John Gruden says Torberg plays a 200-foot game and is strong, even giving the 21-year-old some reps as a winger on the Marley's top line, as well as giving him some time centering his own line. Torberg, after returning from his injury, told me that it was a tough process being out and being away from the team while he tries to recover from this injury. But he did say too that he made sure that when he was ready to return, he was ready to step up and step into the lineup and contribute on the Marlies. Now, I wouldn't count on Torberg playing some NHL games this season, but if he continues playing like he is, he could be someone the Maple Leafs could look at next season as a depth right wing option. I also wanted to give an update on Ty Voigt, given a lot of people are excited about the prospect's potential. He started the season late after suffering a shoulder injury in the prospects tournament in Traverse City back in September, and he only started playing games at the beginning of December with the ECHL's Newfoundland Growlers, but he was playing really good there and he earned a call up to the Toronto Marlies. But unfortunately, in his AHL debut, just six minutes into the game, Voigt was checked into the boards and went into it awkwardly and left the game. Now, Gruden did say following that game on Wednesday that Voigt had an upper body injury, but at practice on Thursday, he was seen wearing a sling. And whether that's good news or not is yet to be seen. It's just an unfortunate blow for the 20 year old as he makes his pro debut this season. All right, Nick, thank you for that. That's great. That's good. Did the Marlies lose 9 3 recently? Hmm. No, no, because they like try and stuff. Good for them. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. And if you didn't, screw you and Merry Christmas. Tell all your friends. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to SCPN. Or don't, whatever. If your job is to play professional hockey, play hockey professionally.